Over the past few months, I've been working on a new game in the platform fighter genre. And in this video, I want to bring you on at the start of development to show you the overall offensive, defensive, and movement mechanics, as well as leave you with an idea of what this game is going to be going forward. Here's the first devlog for the as of yet unnamed platform fighter. So uh, here we are in the game, and um, here I am. Okay. Basic system mechanics like in all games is a walk, you can jump, there's a short hop and a full jump, and you can double jump, and you can fast fall. On top of that, you can dash, you can dash around, or if you hold it, you can run, and you can shield, and you have three air dodges. So if you just neutral air dodge by pressing shield in the air, if you press shield in a direction in the air, you'll kind of jump in that direction. Sort of like an air tech you might see in other games. And, you know, basic platforming, and there's fighting. Now let's talk about little small differences. I said you have a double jump, you also have a triple jump. So one, two, three. Uh, on top of that, a quick refresher on landing leg. When you attack in the air and you land too early, like you land in the middle of the attack, you'll just have to sit there for a second. Look how long this is. I'm pressing shield the entire time. And normally this is kind of unavoidable, but in this game, if you hit somebody successfully, you take no no uh, landing lag at all. So I, I'm immediately, I'm gonna press uh, this attack and then hold shield the entire time. Now watch me. No landing lag at all. And you can follow up on uh, certain combos. Like that. And that's basically the small differences. But uh, let's talk about big differences. So there's a lot of different games. Uh, anime fighters, street fighter type games, and platform fighters. Some fighters will have an air dash, and this game has has an air dash if you press side B. So side B, you'll move in that direction in the air. You have three of these, one, two, three, and that's it. You can move, change directions or whatever. You can also do it on the ground, so just press side B and you'll do a really fast dash, but there'll be a little penalty at the end if you just, if you don't jump out of it or something. Besides air dashing, there's a dash hop. So if you press jump, just after you start your air dash, you'll do a big forward leap. And you have different uh, versions. You have a short hop and a full hop version, depending on how long you hold the jump button. So here's a full hop. Here's a, the short hop version. And this is your regular air dash. Now that's all well and good, but the main reason all this is done is because you can cancel your attacks with air dashes. So, any successful hit like this, you can press side B and you can cancel into an air dash. You can follow up. You can also dash hop out of the air dash if the damage starts getting too high and the character starts to get away from you. So this can open up a bunch of different options and avenues to attack and combo or just move around and evade. Whatever you want to do, really. So there's also differences to the ledge. There's actually huge differences to the ledge. Normally you would be off the ledge and you press up B and you do your recovery move and try to get back. And uh, in this game, it's really not necessary most of the time. You see this white wall down here? If you just touch it, you'll start running up automatically. And you just be placed on up here onto the ledge. You really don't have to worry about uh, recovery that much. And it's a lot more on the guy up here to come down there and force you to the edge of the stage, which is this other giant white wall. This transparent block makes you invincible. I'm still ironing out like how much invincibility you should have when you get off the ledge and where you should be. You are locked into running up. You can't just jump out of this or air dash out of it or something. So there's still risk involved. Uh, the the reason I want to play around with the ledger so much is because in every other platform fighter, you generally, the best option is to stay here and just wait. Uh, I think this is a better solution than what most platform fighters have because the ledge can be incredibly slow. Hey, quick interruption. I want to tell you to uh, first subscribe. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video. And also that this game is obviously in pre-alpha, barely started, still messing around state. But the uh, asset you see that's running around, that's not actually the character in the game um, or has anything to do with this game. 
it's actually a character from a previous game, Aces Under the Moonlight. That game is a Pong game, but in that game, there is a mode called Cross Court Brawl. And Cross Court Brawl is a fighting mode that is a first draft version of this game, sort of. So it has the air dash canceling, it has a shield mechanic, it has the uh, long combos, but it's very much a first draft, like I said. But if you want a taste of this game, like a trial run of this game, A Sun of the Moonlight is free to play on Steam right now, and you can just play it right there. That's all. Let's get back to the video. So those are all the system mechanics, but the issue is, when you can just do a big combo off of any attack, you really can't take any risks. Because if you do, you get punished extremely hard, and it's not super difficult for the attacker. So what happens is the smart option is just to sit back and wait. Like, there's no reason to really take a risk when you can just attack somebody once and do like 30-40%, right? And also, you don't want to take 30-40%, so you're not going to take any risk either. So it can lead to a very uh, campy, sort of evasive game, and especially if you have these type of movement options. There's really not a lot of reason to just jump on somebody and, or go for something. But we've only talked about the offense mechanics. Let's talk about the defense. So uh, I'll have to use two controllers. So so if I hold shield on the second guy and I jump and hit him, I'll take landing leg. You can see I'm not like just landing for free. I'm taking landing leg. A lot of landing leg. So that is a huge, huge problem. You can also, you can't air dash cancel. You can't cancel anything out of it, actually. So even if I hit somebody on the ground, I can't air dash cancel. I can't do anything, really. So you're, you really have, you really can't mess up. You really can't hit them. And then you'll immediately just be open to attack. Now that must seem incredibly harsh. However, some attacks have what's called an auto cancel window. That means that at some point during the attack, if you land, it will cancel for you. Typically, this is within the end lag of the attack. So if I'm all the way up here, obviously, the attack ends before I hit the ground. But also, if I short hop and do it immediately, I'll take no, I won't really take landing light. But if I do that too early or too late, I'll take landing light. Another mechanic that kind of mitigates combos is DI. This is directional influence, this is a little more technical. But it's in basically every platformer. If you hit somebody, they move in a tra trajectory. And that changes with the more damage they get. But you can influence that trajectory while you're being hit. So he's at 130. And so I'm just going to hit him with my uh, regular attack. And he goes all the way over there to that line. So he's at 130, and I'm going to hold towards me. That's how much DI helps in this sense. So I've, I've really over-exaggerated it because you can really push people to, this, uh, to the edge really quickly. Like right there, that was three attacks that were a combo, and he's like right at the edge. So the DI is a lot more exaggerated in this game. It's a lot more important, but it is simple. It was something I wanted to show. This also can disrupt even basic combos. You really have to guess at where this guy's going to go and then use your movement options accordingly. So a small thing I'm adding into the game is a cancel system. I don't want you to be able to cancel attacks. I feel a lot of times you have canceling attacks and it can lead to like new combos and whatever. But usually people just, when they mess up, they use their cancels. So what I'm going to do is there's special attacks, they don't have animations yet. And every time you hit them with this attack, with this rather slow attack, you gain a stock. You can see mine on the bottom left. I have three stocks right now because I hit them three times. Say I air dash. If I press a button like A plus B or the macro, you'll stop in place. On top of that, if you press uh, air dash and you press the button and back 
you'll turn around in the air. Now that might seem like a completely useless uh, way to use uh, your stocks and not really help cancel at all, but this will lead to different attacks like I showed you in the DI demonstration. If he DI's uh, really close to me, I might just pass him by completely. I might be too far. But if I use my stock, I stop right there and I got to be able to hit him. What I wanted to do as well was not just use the cancel system for just uh, movement. I wanted to give some special properties. So this character, if you press up B, uh, they just kind of move, jump in the air. And if you go through somebody, you'll hit them and you, they'll move, right? So what I wanted to do is on successful hit, if you press the stock button, you'll teleport back to the original area. So if I can get this. And you can combo uh, more. And I thought that that might be cool. It might be cool like just that interaction, but also to have specialized properties with the cancel system instead of just having everything be universal. So overall, uh, it's not game defining. It's not supposed to be like the thing that can really uh, level you up, but it is an interesting thing to try, you know? And that's the game so far. Uh, it's in a very early state right now. In order to give you a better idea of where this is going to go, I want to talk about the philosophy. Most platform fighters I play, or you might have seen, really focus on combat, which is understandable, obviously. But for me, I wanted to focus on movement because I feel like a lot of platform fighters forget that the people who started this genre made platformers only. And what I enjoy about platformers, what a lot of people enjoy about platformers, is how you get from A to B. That's fundamental to it. And I feel like other games tend to ignore this fact. And it's a huge part of the game. You know, it involves control, it involves like movement, it involves level design, it involves basically everything. It's something you really can't fake or ignore it requires a lot of experience and time so i plan to you know learn from and study and take my time with this to really get everything done right um also something i wanted to do is a lot of games recently i feel have been focusing on offense and it makes defense kind of a punishment i guess i can say it makes it more of a chore and I kind of feel like neutral as well. Like anytime you're not actually hitting somebody, I feel like the game is just not fun. It, it's very slow or it's boring. And it's really only fun when you can run your game. And any other time is just a waste. So what I want to do with this game is make every part either enjoyable or at least interactable. Right? Typically when you get hit and you're just blocking or you're just getting hit, you can't do anything at all. But in platform fighters, they have DI, and that's always a relevant part of the game. So you can get out of it. You can play a game within a game right there. And also neutral, I think, will benefit from having these huge movement options. They require some tweaking. I mean, this game isn't really even ready for playtesting, I don't think. But that's the philosophy I'm trying to go for. That's the direction this game is going to go in. And uh, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you're excited for this new game. I'll still be working on Ace Under the Moonlight. I can't really keep a stream schedule. I'll probably be working on, be working on it Sunday. Hopefully I'll see you then. Um, otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.